Welcome to video seven, the final video in topic three hardware. This time we're gonna be looking at how we connect to the internet. This is for the IGCSE computer science course from Cambridge. Video seven, we're right at the bottom, network hardware, we're gonna be looking at um, network interface cards, MAC addresses, IP addresses, and finish off with routers. So let's get started. How do we connect our computers to the internet? What do we need in terms of hardware? So, according to the syllabus, we need to understand that a computer needs a network interface card, a NIC, to access a network. Well, what does that mean? I have a couple of NIC network interface cards here, a couple of examples. Um, a network interface card is a hardware component, which enables a computer to connect to a network, e.g. your home network, well, the office network, or the internet. It is a circuit board installed in a computer that provides a dedicated network connection for the computer. It is also called a network interface controller, a network adapter, a LAN adapter, or an ethernet card. And these two examples, one uses um, ethernet cable, this thing here, um, so it's gonna be hardwired from your computer into a, um, a router or a modem. And this one is a, has got an ant antenna, so it is wireless. Okay, well let's start with media access control, a MAC address. Again, the syllabus, understand what is meant by the purpose of a media access control MAC address, including its structure. Well, this is its structure. It's basically two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve numbers, all broken apart by either iPhones or by a colon. And the first part, the first six digits are for the manufacturer's code, i.e. Apple. And the, last, and the last six digits are the device's unique serial number. So just like each house, your house, has its own postal address, every device connected to a network has a media access control address. This uniquely identifies it. The MAC address is linked to the network interface card. So each one of these um, network interface cards has this number built into it. And the MAC address, as I've just said, is 12 digits, and these are hexadecimal numbers. So here is an example. And this is where we're going to find it. If we're using a MacBook, we'd go to system, we'd go to network, click on the hardware tab, and this is the MAC address. This is our unique identifier for that particular device, that particular MacBook. As you can see, it is hexadecimal. Internet protocol, an IP address. Now, there's two different types of IP address, and we're going to talk about these in more detail. We talked about every device needing a MAC address to connect to the internet. Every device also has a unique number, which is known as an IP address. This gets assigned when you connect your device to the internet. Every mobile phone, every laptop, cable box, tablet, server, along with thousands of other types of devices are connected to a computer network or the internet with one of these. IP stands for Internet Protocol, oh my word which is a set of rules governing the format of data sent via the internet to local networks. The internet needs a way to differentiate between different computers, routers and websites. IP addresses provide a way of doing so and form an essential part of how the internet works. So, how does it work? Let's talk about this. Here's an example of a IP version 6, 128 bit. There's also an IP version 4. I don't know what happened to version 5. But version 4 is 32 bits. I'm assuming version 5 would be 64 bit. But the IP version 6 is 128 bits. And the number looks something like this. Your computer, phone, or tablet indirectly connects to the internet by connecting at first to a network um, connected to the internet, which then grants your device access to the internet. When you're at home, the network will usually be your internet service provider, your ISP. At work or school, it will be the company's network. Your IP address is assigned to your device by your ISP. Your internet activity goes through the ISP, so these can block and parental controls and various things. They can sort out what you can see and what you can't see. But the internet activity goes through the ISP and then route it back, and they route it back to you using your IP address. Since they are giving you access to the internet, it is their role to assign an IP address to your device. However, your IP address can change. For example, turning your modem off or on, or your router on and off can change it. Or you can contact your ISP if you really want to, and they can change it for you. When you're out and about though, for example, traveling, 
and you take your device with you so let's say you've got your, your mobile phone or your, or, your, or your laptop and you take it out of the house the, the OMS IP address doesn't come with you this is because you'll be using another network to access the internet maybe something from maybe Starbucks or McDonald's or some or you've gone to the airport and will be using a different or an, a temporary IP address assigned to you by the ASP of the coffee shop the hotel or the airport so just as a recap um, to try and explain the difference a little bit more so the MAC address identifies the physical address of the device on the network it's unique for that particular device on the network a unique serial number it is assigned by the manufacturer of the device and is part of the network interface card they can be universal or local it uses uh, it uses 48-bit technology it can be UAA or LAA UAA stands for universal administrated address so it's set by the manufacturer of the NIC card or LAA which is locally administered address which has been assigned by the systems administrator as for IP addresses they this it identifies a global address on the network it tells us where you are exactly located in the world may not necessarily be unique dynamic IP addresses are assigned by ISPs using DHCP each time the device connects to the internet dynamic IP addresses um, change every time a device connects to the internet static IP addresses don't change it uses either 32-bit IP version 4 or 128-bit IP version 6 it can be static or dynamic and I'll talk about that a little bit more static IP addresses as the name suggests a static IP address does not change businesses offering dedicated internet services such as web hosting prefer static IPs for this reason these are assigned manually by internet service providers the pros of this it's ideal for hosting computer service it facilitates faster data exchange it supports remote desktop access however it's difficult to set up and manage it's more vulnerable to hacking and it's generally more expensive whereas dynamic IP addresses and um, these are temporary and may change when you reboot your system or your router ISPs assign dynamic IP addresses as needed via a dynamic host configuration protocol which is basically a DHCP server most devices have dynamic addresses as they're secure when a dynamic address is not in use an ISP assigns it to a different device so the pros of this it's automatically configured requires no additional setup it's less prone to hacking and it's cost effective it's cheaper than a, than a static IP address makes it nearly impossible to set up remote access can cause downtime when disconnected and it affects the performance of geolocation services finally routers that if these are something we have in our homes or in the office or at school which enable multiple computers to connect to the internet but what does it do so the syllabus says we need to be able to describe the role of a router in a network well let's have a look what does a router do a router sends data to a specific destination on a network a router can connect a local network to the internet a router can assign a local IP address to each device on the network it creates a firewall to prevent security breaches it manages the traffic on your network and it handles any parental controls on a home LAN network local area network can you remember this diagram from pre this is this is topic 2 data transmission um, and we've got packets of data moving around between different nodes and different switches so the router is a device that is designed to receive analyze and forward data packets between computer networks by enabling data packets to be routed between different networks for example to join a LAN network to a wide area network the router takes data transmitted in one format from a network and converts the data to a protocol and format understood by another network thereby allowing them both to communicate with each other routers inspect the data packet sent to it from any computer on any of the networks connected to it every computer on the same network has the same part of an IP address the router is able to send the data packet to the appropriate switch or node and the data will then be delivered to the correct device using the MAC destination address if the MAC address doesn't match any devices connected to the switch it passes on to another switch on the same network until the appropriate device has been found 
routers can be wired or wireless devices ladies and gentlemen that is it for this video I hope you've enjoyed it that's the final part for topic 3 hardware I would just like to thank you all for supporting the channel um, I know some of you have bought me a coffee already using buymeacoffee.com um, fantastic thank you very much indeed for that please continue to ask questions leave your comments hit notifications and please subscribe and finally if you wish to buy me a coffee I'd be truly grateful please visit buymeacoffee.com forward slash learning zone thank you very much indeed see you next time bye for now